From the land of partially frozen lakes, <laughs> this is 10,000 Takes, brought to you by Minnesota Score Radio. Wally and Eric back for yet another week as we slice and dice the always busy, always topical, super saturated Minnesota sports scene. And Wally, a uh, lot to get into as yes. we pivot from January into February. I know you're all fired up about the Timberwolves. Signature win on Monday night down there in OKC. Uh, they got a big win. It was the battle of the two top teams uh, in the West, and the Timberwolves really needed it because they have already lost two of the three. So uh, getting a win evens the score, so that'll come into play at the end of the year if the two teams are tied for some reason. Who might get home court? All this stuff adds up, but um, they got to keep winning basketball games and stop losing to the Bottom of the barrel teams like uh, yeah. they have been. Go figure. Lose at San Antonio a couple nights earlier, and that's right. uh, you know a bottom feeding team. And then you win at OKC. So right. um, I do like the the matchup within the matchup, and that would be I, I think moving forward, uh, SGA as they call him down there in OKC, Shea Gilgus Alexander, uh, superstar Ant is a superstar. They're right around the same age range. I think they like to go mano a mano. That'll be one that'll be fun to follow down the road. Yeah. Well, and Anthony Edwards had a signature dunk oh boy, at the end he? of the yeah. game. And he got fouled on the play. But as I told you on the radio earlier this week, he has got to stop barking at the refs. I mean, it's just, he's getting to be like cat. And you don't want that because then you have a reputation. And he got fouled, clearly. But he dunked it. So, I mean, is, is it really worth it? I mean, you, you, it gave him, I think, at the point, that point, like a six-point lead with 30 seconds to go. You're going to win the basketball game. There's no advantage in barking at the refs there. They, they already didn't call it. And he's been doing a lot more of that this well, year. Well, you don't want to get into a situation where they tee you up and then you give OKC or, yeah, worse yet, or another right. team a chance to maybe whittle that lead down with no time elapsing on the clock because of free throws. Yeah, well, I think he's a young guy, and I think, you know, I've always said with, with officials, referees, zebras, you know, honey is better than vinegar. <laughs> these these yeah. folks are human, and they remember the players that, you know, bark and jaw at them constantly and the ones who, you know, shrug it off and maybe during a timeout they'll go up to them and say, okay, what happened on that last one just so I know moving forward uh, what I need to do? But it's, yeah. it's an art. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the NBA is kind of turned into a three-point shooting league anyway. And so when you go in the lane, I don't know, they're just not apt to call anything anymore. It's, it's kind of – it's not like it used to be so, back in the so 80s. the NBA is more physical than the NFL. Well, it, it might can, be. It can be. <laughs> it can be. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get knocked around. It's not exactly you know Larry Bird and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar wrestling. No, I don't think we've reached those stages. But I mean, you get whacked on the arm and you don't get it called. Uh, move on. You know, you just stop barking at the refs. That's all. The the other thing that the Timberwolves are gonna have to figure out, and I think they're gonna have to do this before the trade deadline. I mean, let's face it. Uh, they have had issues without Michael Conley in the lineup, and he has he's a steadying force at that point guard position. You know, they've tried um, Alexander, Mikhail Alexander there, and that hasn't worked out as well as they had hoped, I think. I don't think he's per se a point guard. I'd rather see him play the two or and move Ant to the three. And then Jordan McLaughlin gave him some minutes and gave him some points the other night, but... Um, they may have to address that in the before the trade deadline. Well, and and Tim Conley, the GM, and I'll now give him credit for making the Rudy G trade. Oh, yeah. The, after you that, buried him exactly. all last year. That thing's flip-flopped. It looks good now, but you don't have a lot of chips to deal with because no. all those chips were uh, peddled away to get Rudy True. G. So I don't know how you'd get a – a serviceable backup point guard. Um, well, somebody looking to shed salary. Possibly, know? or a team, yeah, that's out of it. And, yeah, wants to. How about Tyus? You think you could bring Tyus back? I think Tyus would be a great fit. I think Tyus would love to play on this team. I now. think he would. He different than the one he played on, uh, you know, early in his career. And, well, we'll see. The Timberwolves, again, they, they, they haven't really done anything yet. They need to keep going and keep winning and make sure they garner home court in the playoffs. Because it will be a difficult postseason with the likes of the Thunder 
and you know the Mavericks and the, the Clippers Suns. and the Suns yeah. and the Nuggets. Can't leave them out. No, no. Let's not sleep on the Lakers. Yeah. yeah so. um, all right. Your Twins were busy, uh, and we kind of figured this was going to happen. They have, you know, there's all this talk in the offseason about them needing to fill the holes left by, you know, Sonny Gray is gone, Kenta Maeda is gone, and they need to fill those spots in the rotation. So they went out, they traded Jorge Polanco. He was an all-star back in 2019, the, the uh, all-star game in Cleveland. And he uh, has been dealt to Seattle in exchange for a boatload of players, actually. But uh, Anthony DiSclefani is the main chip in that, although they got a reliever in there, too. But DiSclefani has a track record. They're hoping, I would assume, to fill him into a, you know the middle of that rotation, maybe the three or four spot. He had a pretty good year two years ago with the Giants. He was so-so last year. Seattle... Uh, picked him up in the offseason, and now he has been traded to the Twins. Let's see if he can make up. But Paul Hanko had a, you know, he had a good run with the Twins. He was the longest tenured Twin. Yeah, there's no doubt that Jorge Polanco did a lot of good things for the Minnesota Twins, and and he moved around a lot defensively. You know, you saw him at shortstop, you saw him at second base. He provided pop with the bat. I thought, I think he brought energy too when he played for the Twins. You know, but they by losing Sonny Gray and Kenta Maeda you know, you lose pitching depth. Right. So they have to bolster that. Will this be the answer? I have no idea. I still think the Twins' biggest ally is they play in the AL Central. <laughs> and True. You take a look around the division, you know, who's who's made any splashy moves? You know, Detroit's made a few moves. White Sox have done nothing. Your Guardians are, you know, their bank book is glued shut. You know, they're not going to spend <laughs> no. any money. And the Kansas City Royals are more focused on – for some reason, some odd oh, reason, we go. one of the best ballparks in baseball, <laughs> Kauffman Stadium. So yes, you're right. it might be the Twins' division again. <laughs> well, it's theirs to lose, probably. <laughs> it is. Yeah, they won it last year. So, all right. Uh, I guess we're going to talk some more Timberwolves, right? Yeah, we will. Leah B is on deck. Timberwolves and Lynx broadcaster here on 10K Takes. Your Twins ticket. In Lakeville, Minnesota, dozens of meeting venues are ready to host your next corporate event, banquet, and holiday party. Lakeville has unique conference facilities, a variety of hotels, an abundance of team building options, and dining that are sure to impress. For suggestions that suit your needs, please call the Lakeville Convention and Visitors Bureau at 952-469-2020 or go to visitlakeville.org. Lakeville, we mean business. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. <laughs> Maya? Oh, I love your earring. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Welcome back. 10,000 takes. And as promised, we're going to talk some more Minnesota Timberwolves. And joining us to do just that, Leah B. Olson. She is sideline reporter and works the broadcast for both the Timberwolves and the Lynx. And I'm going to get right into it with you, Leah. <laughs> you asked the magic question that's probably or already <laughs> has cost uh, Anthony Edwards some money. Um, he went on and was not happy with the officials, and he said so, and he says, I'm going to get fined. My question to you, do you think that Anthony Edwards is a little bit too bit, uh, too demonstrative about his displeasure with the officials these days? Well, I will have to say that it definitely worries me just because I don't know that that's going to help him at all with the officials, and it's clear in this league, it always has been clear that – veteran players get calls when other players don't get calls yet he's been in this league long enough and has established himself as one of the great players that I think he should be getting those calls um but like when you look at like Luka Doncic and all these guys they complain a lot to the referees and so I feel like that's the way of the young NBA right now as you gotta you gotta talk a lot for maybe refs to have respect for you. Mm. I don't know, but I honestly don't know if it's the right way to go or not. I knew before the interview he was going to say something like that because when I walked up to him, I said, congratulations, Ant, on a big win. And 
he looked at me and he was like, they did us wrong. They did us wrong. Oh, and I boy. Was like, <laughs> I knew where he was going with that one. So, um, so I'm very curious to see what happens. All right. Well, one good thing about Ant, he's not a load management guy. <laughs> if he misses a game, he's legitimately injured like the hip injury yes. uh, earlier in the season. But this keeps coming up, not just when the Timberwolves are at home, but around the association. The other night, no Luka, uh, no Kyrie. Joel Embiid didn't play for Philadelphia earlier in the season. Um, I remember going to a game a couple of years ago. No Giannis when Milwaukee made uh, the Bucks' only appearance of the season. What, what can the NBA do about this? Because you know, Leah, fans buy tickets based on seeing the Lukas and the Giannis's and um, those kind of superstar players. I think it's a problem. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is a problem, and it's a problem that the league has tried to address this year. And I think one of the ways that we're seeing is that for the awards, that for being an all-star this year or um, the MVP of the league, you have to have played a certain amount of games throughout the year. And that is a direct response to saying, you guys got to play more if you want to win these awards that are usually tied to bonuses in their contracts. So I think the league understands it's a pretty big issue. And, um, you know, it is tough. I, we had a Lakers game at Target Center um, about a month back, and I was walking through the stands, and there were all these little kids there, and they all had their LeBron jerseys on, and they had bought these tickets way in advance. And LeBron wasn't playing in that game. He sat on the bench for that game, and they were – it was load management. So um, – I, I think it's a real issue. You know, a young player like Ant, he doesn't want to sit. He wants to play. But like the older players have said to him, wait till you get, you know, in your advanced years and getting through an 82-game season becomes a little bit more of a problem. Um, so um, maybe they are, they're going to have to eventually put some stricter rules around it, but I think the league is definitely addressing it. Yeah, they're going to have to. I mean, as you said – you know, they, as they get in their older years, last time I checked, you know, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, <laughs> you know, we can go down the list, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Charles Barkley, all these guys back in the 80s and in the 90s, and before them, certainly, they played their 82-game season. And you know what? If they missed more than two or three games, that was a big deal. What, they, what the NBA has done, actually, they had a 65-game limit for some of these awards. That's 17 games. I mean, that's what, you know, about a fifth of the games you're missing. So I, I don't know if they've addressed it correctly. They really need to change this because it, it drives me crazy. Yeah, and I, I mean, my heart always just goes to the fan that has saved up the money to go Absolutely. to a big game. These, these tickets are not cheap. It's hard to get into these arenas these days. And you you're going there to see the stars, and that's the bottom line. And um, so I, I do think it's really, really critically important um, to to handle it. Um, but I think it is hard because, like, for instance, with the Timberwolves, probably Mike Connolly is the oldest player on the team who has is making a significant impact on this Timberwolves team. And he, he literally cannot play every game of the season. Like, he will not make it through the season. So you do need to figure out a way to get these guys on the other end of 30 um, through the season um, while also making sure that fans get to see the stars that they want to see. Well, and in the case of Dallas, you're chasing Minnesota. You need to win that game. I would think you'd want all hands on deck. But what about this premise, Leah? Um, okay, unless it's a, an actual injury, broken foot, knee, whatever – if, if a guy like Luca comes in and he scored 73 last week, people want to see him. What about a minutes limit? That he has to at least be on the floor for 10 to 20 minutes and let the coach make the choice on how long. Mm, yeah, that's an interesting concept. I think that that is probably something that coaches don't want to be limited or hindered by or players don't want to. And I'm sure the players um, – you know, with their collective bargaining agreement, are not going to love stuff like that. Um, but I, I like the thought of really tying it tightly to bonuses, to awards, um, because, you know, that's really what motivates everybody in this league. 
Well, Leah, before we let you go, I wanted to ask you about the Gopher women's basketball team. They took a big hit. Mara Braun looks like she's going to be out most, if not the rest of this season. Um, but Coach Plissenwhite's done a pretty good job this year. Your thoughts on uh, on the club so far? Absolutely impressed with Coach Plitzka White. I have had the opportunity to meet her. She's done a tremendous job of reaching out to us old timers who played uh, for the Gophers way back in the day. She um, has impressed me with her leadership on this team, and she has that thing that I love when you meet a coach. Is she kind of has an it factor about her. She knows how to coach. And so I'm thankful that Lindsay Whalen kind of handed her this great group of elite athletes, and Coach Plitzka White has taken them to the next level. Uh, super bummed about Mara Braun being injured. It's a big, it's a big hit to this team. This team is on the bubble of if they can possibly make it to the big dance, and um, without her, that's going to be a lot, lot more difficult. But they have, they have performed quite well this this season. I've been impressed. Well, Leah, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Uh, enjoy the rest of both seasons, the Timberwolves and the uh, Gopher women, and we'll talk to you again soon. Sounds great, guys. Thanks for having Thanks, me on. Thanks, Leah. All right. She is Leah B. Olson, former Gopher and current Timberwolves and Lynx broadcast right here on 10,000 Takes. Stay with us. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're It isn't just about vision, it's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Finding the ideal place to stay is important for business travelers. Lakeville, Minnesota is conveniently located off I-35, just south of the Twin Cities with a variety of hotel choices. Lakeville offers convenient amenities such as shopping, walking trails, golf, and more. Our unique meeting spaces, historic downtown, live music, and over 60 dining options are sure to impress. Book your next stay in Lakeville and experience convenience, comfort, and quality. Find your perfect hotel at visitlakeville.org. And we continue along here on 10,000 Takes. Wally Lankfellow, along with the guy dressed like a road cone, Eric Nelson. <laughs> this is burnt orange, as they say down there in the uh, UT country. Texas oh, Longhorn. Okay, either that or you're going to go out hunting after the show. No, I couldn't I, figure out which I, it was. I'll, I'll be working for MnDOT. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> they pay well. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> uh, I think that the guys who are playing uh, next Sunday get uh, paid well. It's Super Bowl in Las Vegas. What took so long for it to get to Las Vegas? Well, they haven't had a stadium before. Now they have a team and a stadium. And I'm telling you, if you think that building a stadium and changing things around in your metropolitan area for your NFL team is going to get you a Super Bowl, you're going to have to wait in line because they're going to be going to Vegas and Miami and New Orleans and Los Angeles. Nashville. Nashville. All these places are ahead of you. And so the Vikings and U.S. Bank Stadium, I don't know if we're going to see a Super Bowl in the next 25 years. I, I, would I be seriously stunned. doubt it. And once Chicago gets their glass Oh, house, and they're going to be ahead of they'll Minnesota. They'll be the Midwest stopping point yeah. probably every 10 to 12 years for yeah. a Super Bowl. So they'll squeeze out Detroit, maybe Indy, and certainly Minneapolis. But, yeah, it's uh, – it's. I think the Twin Cities, to be honest – is going to be lucky to get another Final Four because all of those cities you just clicked off and these new venues that have popped up and a lot modeled after U.S. Bank Stadium, right. they're grabbing Final Fours as well. So you ruined it for yourself exactly. by exactly. that stadium. That's why words. Buffalo figured it out. The yeah. Bills stayed in their lane. They're going to get a brand new outdoor venue. They they know no one's coming to Buffalo for a Super Bowl right. or the Final Four, so they're going to build probably what they'll have is a, a much shinier version of, of Lambeau. Yeah. They'll keep the elements, but it'll be, you know, it'll have all the bells and whistles. Right, and heated areas and stuff yes. like that to protect the fans. So like protect the fans, keep the game what outside. What we could have done in Minnesota. What we should have done in Minnesota. That one Super Bowl oh. we got, 
I don't know if that Yippee makes a skippy. difference. Yeah, it, it's been over now for six years. And they cut corners. You know that at the grass really? house. They did not. I don't think they bolted the seats in too tightly because that Philadelphia <laughs> Eagle fan took one out after they won, got through the you know the pivoting the gates, doors, yep. and then he got through Checkpoint Charlie at MSP no. with a seat. How does that happen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And by the way, you t- you cued me in on this one. So if you want to go and take a tour of U.S. Bank Stadium, it costs you twenty nine dollars yeah. for an adult. How about that for the ripoff? Why of the year? in the world would anybody want to do that? That's and pay twenty nine bucks to go walk around an empty stadium with no Lombardis in the trophy case. <laughs> what are you selling? I have no idea. No games. They're probably, I'm guessing there's no concession, and if they are, you better get your checkbook out again. I got it. Yes. Taylor Swift sang here. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what you can mark. It. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Although she didn't come back here when the Chiefs played Minnesota. No, she did not. In did October. She? she bypassed Minneapolis. No. Is she going to be in Las Vegas? Because she's technically on tour, I believe, in Japan. So the big question is, will she show I... up for the Chiefs? And the 49ers I think next she Sunday. Will scramble across the Pacific Ocean and get Make to an uh, Las huh? Vegas and be there. But as you said at the top of the segment, I've been to a lot of Super Bowls, but putting one in Las Vegas, that's going to be chaos squared because Vegas thrives on <laughs> oh boy. major events and you're going to have it all going on. And the San Francisco fan base, we saw it when the 49ers played here. Right. They're passionate. They travel. It's a border state to Nevada, so they'll be down there in Vegas and Kansas City. They have one of the top fan bases as well, so this is going to be off the chain. Viking fans, once again, have to live vicariously through other teams yeah. when it comes to a Super Bowl. Boy, do we have any former Vikings playing in this game? Of any uh, note? Jarek McKinnon, oh, I Jarek believe, McKinnon. was with Kansas City. Oh, okay. yeah, and, uh, well, he doesn't get much PT these no, days. No, he doesn't. <laughs> okay. He might get another ring. Well, Patrick Mahomes was born here, wasn't he? Yes, Latroy Hawkins <laughs> is his godfather and uh, his father. Father Pat Mahomes pitch for the Twins. Okay. There you go. Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> we got nothing else to go on. These Basically. Days. No. Right. Okay. Um, all right. While we have the Super Bowl next weekend, we also have the NHL All-Star <laughs> break going on right now. And your Minnesota Wild go into the break in really tough shape. They lose the last two games, particularly the loss to the Ducks. I mean, the Ducks are – talk about bottom feet. That's not a very good team. That those are ducks without feathers right there, and they knocked the uh, they knocked the Wild off in the last game before the break. So now the Wild go into the break with a two game losing streak. Does Bill Guerin make any moves here over the next week or two to try and you know make one last charge at this? I mean they're not out of it, but let's face it, this is not a team that's going to make a run in the postseason. Why even bother? Just go with business as usual. Do your thing. Let the team, let the chips fall where they may, and they're probably going to fall outside of the postseason. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, these guys are competitors. They're alpha males. They're wired to try to win. Bill Guerin's job is to win. Of course. And John Hines, the head coach, doesn't want to lose because, as we know, it, it's a turnstile. It's a, it's a revolving door with head coaches, especially in the NHL. But I, I agree with you. I don't think the Wild, if they got in, would pull what the Florida Panthers did a year ago no. and knock out a top no seed way. as an eight seed and go to the Stanley Cup Finals. That's you know, that's Halley's Comet flying through the sky. It doesn't happen that often. So play it out, see what happens. Maybe you get in the NHL lottery. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're without Jared Spurgeon for the rest of the year. He's injured out for the year. I mean, when you have, you know, your top defenseman, who's also one of your captains, out, I think it's Here's time what to... I would be doing. Okay. I would make sure I know who the top goaltending prospect is in this upcoming draft. And go and get I him. I would put a big circle around him. I'd go get him because I'm not sold on their goaltending. Philip Gustafson, one night he's pitching a shutout and stopping 40 pucks. The next night he's giving up seven. You can't have that in the NHL. It's too inconsistent. And Marc-Andre Fleury's going to the Hall of Fame, but that's because of what he did in Pittsburgh, not Minnesota. <laughs> no, you're right, Mark. <laughs> Marc-Andre's uh, got a little gray hair going. Yeah, he does. Yeah. In a great career, but all things come to an end, right? All good things must come to an end. All right, so this segment must come to an end. This show <laughs> must come to an end, but not before takes of the day. That's coming up next. You're watching 10,000 Takes. Stay with us. I've been meaning to give you these for many years. I think they're perfect. Maya? Oh, I love you. 
their airing. Why didn't you try these? It isn't just about vision. It's about care. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. 10K takes on television as we uh, wind up yet another episode. But before we go away and put a ribbon and a bow on this one and wrap it up, takes of the day. Mm -hmm. Are you an angry American? Grumpy Guardian? Giddy Guardian? Sarcastic Sam? So many choices. Yeah, so many choices. Well, uh, well, as you know, this weekend is All-Star Weekend in the National Hockey League as well as, of course, the National Football League with the Pro Bowl, which is... Uh, turned into a touch football game officially. It probably has been a touch football game for about 10 years now, but they made it a uh, flag football game the last two years, which is obviously a joke. Take a look, if you will. Go to YouTube and take a look at Pro Bowl highlights from you know the 90s. I'm not talking about looking back at the 60s when they were killing each other, but they were still playing relatively decent football in the 90s and back in the 80s in the Pro Bowl. I mean, it was a fun game to watch. You want to watch all the best players all at the same time. And no, you don't need the players from the Super Bowl. I'm fine with that. That that It doesn't need to be played the week after. I, I, I agree with them playing it before the Super Bowl. That's all well. But it's just such a waste now. The only thing that, the only positive of it, and you experience this, is that they do engage with the fans a lot when they set up the Pro Bowl. So that's the Pro Bowl. The NHL All-Star huh. Game. Oh, boy. I mean, it's not even the All-Star game anymore. It's three-on-three, three and it's like four different games, different divisions against each other. I can't even watch it. Nobody plays any defense there. And speaking of no defense, a couple weeks from now, we're going to have the NBA All-Star sham, and they don't <laughs> play any defense. I mean, they just get out of the way and let a guy dunk. They already have a dunk contest. We already have a three-point contest. We don't need that in the NBA All-Star game itself. They tried to fix it a couple of years ago, and I thought that they did a pretty good job the fourth quarter of the last couple of years, not last year, but the first two years of the experiment worked. They really played hard and it was fun to watch the 10 best players on the planet playing up to a certain point. Well, it didn't work last year. For some reason, the players just decided, eh, we're not going to play any defense. It was awful. So if you're going to continue down this road, just cancel them all. I'm sick of the all-star games. Wow. Let's see what that mood meter says. Oh, he's a sarcastic Sam. He doesn't even want any kind of all-star game no. in any major sport except for Major League Baseball. That's well, I, these events are placeholders. It's filler for network television. That's really all it is. And it gives kids and maybe their parents a chance to show up and not have to fork out a boatload of money to see these stars up close. But that's about it. Uh, all right. Well, my take of the day, uh, Super Bowl Sunday, of course, is coming up in uh, a few days. And at 10 a.m. Central Time on CBS, the network carrying the game and also Paramount, one of your favorite streaming platforms, <laughs> uh, they're going to have a documentary called You Are Looking Live. And it's the history of the NFL today, which was the first ever pregame show for the National Football League back in the mid-1970s. First one to air highlights, first one to really, you know, elevate the game that we now know Bigfoot's every other sport Incredibly popular, the National Football League. And I, I think this will be a fun show to watch. Of course, the gold standard, Brent Musburger, he coined the phrase, you are looking live. I believe Brent lives out in Las Vegas. He used to be the voice of the Las <laughs> Vegas Raiders. There. I think so. And I, I saw some uh, quotes in an article about this that, you know, uh, Bryant Gumbel was the first guy to replace Brent. And he said, he says, I was quaking in my seat knowing that I filled in for that legend or tried to replace Brent Musburger. But it's also Jimmy the Greek and Phyllis George and Irv Cross and all the others behind them. And I think CBS is still the gold standard of pregame shows, halftime, postgame. Although Fox has a good core, I will give them that. Right. And there's a lot of continuity there. And it's, it's a big battle, these pregame shows. Can I say this? Some of the other ones, there's just too many people on oh the set Oh, my goodness, now. I yes. Am, I am just, oh, the Thursday night is a joke, and the ESPN is a joke. Stop it. Just give me a couple of the Well, analysts. and you know what? Since since uh, media outlets are in cutback mode, if I ran a network, goodbye, sideline reporters. I'm going to save a lot of money. I don't need you. You add very little to a broadcast. Yes. On that note, we got to go. Let's FedEx out those thank yous. One to David Weld, one to Rocky, one to Paul Langfellow, and Leah B. Olson. 
For Wally, I'm Eric saying so long. This is 10K Takes Your Sports Ticket.